Hey everyone, welcome to the Edward Jones Chat and Cage. I'm Alexa Dat, and I am so excited to be hosting this show today because today's special guest is Milwaukee Brewers pitcher Brent Suter. He is one of the funniest guys. I know you love his videos on Twitter and Instagram. We're going to talk to him in just a little bit. And you, the fan, are going to get the opportunity to ask questions. There are two ways you can do that. One is to sign up or sign in below by hitting the green button. That way you can be face-to-face -face with him and, answer, and ask your question. Or you can go on Twitter and use the hashtag chatting cage to get your question in that way. That way I can see it and get it to him throughout the show. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome Brent to the show. First of all, Brent, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much for entertaining us with your videos. It's been incredible to watch your personality shine. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's been a blast here this season for sure. All right, so uh, let's jump right into Twitter because people want to know what inspired your guys' Dumb and Dumber skit. It came out and the internet went absolutely wild. You took Twitter by storm. Uh, so this is from Brooke Steffen who said, what inspired that skit? Um, you know, I don't know if they knew. I was a huge Jim Carrey fan before they asked me to do that bit, but our, our community relations directors came up to me a couple days before and was like, hey, they're shooting a promo for the uh, – bobblehead giveaway for the bullpen cart and if you could do the Jim Carrey piece they'd love it and I said sure I don't know if you guys know I love Jim Carrey I do his impression like every day so they uh it worked out perfectly Hater was great uh JJ was great and uh it turned out to be a really funny video it was incredible it's my favorite movie of all time so you guys absolutely yeah. nailed it uh by the way awesome. finish this movie line for me we got no food we got no jobs our pets heads are falling off <laughs> You're the best. Any other uh, Jim Carrey impressions you can do for us while we have you here? Uh, definitely a bunch. Uh, Ace Ventura is another one of my favorites. And one of my favorite lines is, your request is not unlike your large intestine. Stinky and loaded with danger. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it, just... you, you literally take uh, form of Jim Carrey. It's incredible you. <laughs> watching you do that. I love it. Uh, so Jeffrey wants to know, when you heard that Jim Carrey fell in love with your skit, he basically on Twitter said, you guys have some comedy chops or a severe behavioral disorder. What was your reaction yeah. when you saw that tweet? Well, I came in mid-game uh, on Friday night, and our translator, Carlos Bisuela, came up and said, you know what just happened on Twitter? And I was like, what? He goes, Jim Carrey just tweeted at you saying, like, giving you a compliment. I go, what? He knows who I am, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, I just almost had a heart attack there, and then uh, and I replied to him later, like, definitely the severe behavioral disorder. <laughs> it, was, it was great. It was yeah, great. option really B cool. of the two options. Um, by the way, <laughs> yeah. not only do you do Jim Carrey, you do animals sometimes, too, because you joined us on the rundown, and you turned into the raptor. First of all, where did that nickname come from, Frank wants to know, and uh, could you give us a little preview? Yeah, it came, uh, Tim Dillard, a guy in AAA with us, uh, saw me run in sprints uh, a couple years ago and said, dude, you look you look like you're running like a raptor. And so he, every time I was running the sprints, he'd do like the, you know, the raptor noise and just kept on calling me the raptor. And then I was in some of his dub smash videos and soon enough it was my nickname, but I'll step back and do a little raptor for you. Just for you know, that's, that's all it's about right there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I can't wait for everyone to see this video. This is absolutely incredible. Here in the Edward Jones Chatting Cage with Brent Suter. Uh, hey, let's finish with um, uh, Miss Bakerman wa asking you about the wives of the Brewers and Cubs. You guys had a softball game mm -hmm. that was pretty incredible. And there was video on Twitter of you getting pretty heated. Uh, you had some of the roles reversed. What was that like for you? That was pretty cool. Um, that was a really fun event, a uh, great event. I hope they keep that going, but it was for a really good cause for the RBI programs in Milwaukee and Chicago. And the wives, was, like you said, a role reversal. We get to cheer on the wives today, and uh, they did a great job. Both teams played their hearts out, but our wives prevailed in the end. And uh, it was just so much fun, uh, so much fun energy, and a lot of people showed up, so it was a great, great event. Congratulations. Uh, nicely done there. We got a fan here who's joining us live in the Edward Jones Shannon Cage. Hey, what's your name? You get some FaceTime with Brent Suter. It's uh, Chris here. I was just wondering, what is it like playing for Craig Council? Hey, Chris. Uh, it's a pleasure to play for him every day. He's the same guy. He's an awesome leader, awesome manager. He's got your back no matter what. And, uh, I mean, he, for having really no managerial experience before coming to the big leagues, he's assumed the role smooth, as smooth as you could possibly uh, take it. And he's, he's just our leader. He's, he's a pleasure to play for, for sure. All right. Sticking with fans. Yeah, great question. We've got another great question here on Twitter from LNO2, uh, your daily preparation, is it any different from when you start a game to when you come in as a reliever? Um, the mental part isn't 
uh, much different. It's just kind of the routines. Like my lifts get a little lighter uh, in between games because I might be pitching every day in the bullpen, and whereas I kind of have that that schedule, more segmented schedule as a starter. But um, other than that, it's pretty much the same routine. Um, just try to go out there. I definitely try to be the same pitcher out of the bullpen and out of the, as a starter, just trying to get efficient outs, uh, get the batter out as quickly as possible. So. Uh, it's really not too much different, but it's one of those hybrid roles that I've really embraced for the last couple of years, and I really enjoy it. You're doing really well with it. John here on the Edward Jones Chatting Cage has a question for you. Brent, John, what's your question? Hi, Brent. I was wondering uh, who your favorite player was growing up. Uh, my favorite player, great question, was uh, Ken Griffey Jr., for sure. Um, he, he was one of my idols, just like Jim Carrey was. I watched his videos all the time. I would always do his swing. He had one of the best swings in baseball, uh, if not the best ever, and he was just a pleasure to watch play. So he was my favorite player growing up. It's time now for our EDJ question of the day, Brent. And you hit your first career home run. Not only was it your first career home run, it happened to be off of Corey Kluber, Klubot of all pitchers. What was going through your mind when that uh, ball left the yard? Shoot. Uh, I hit the ball, and I didn't really feel much off the bat, which is always the hitter position players always tell me is a good thing. And so I w hit it, and I was just kind of saying, that has the right depth, like the right angle. I was just like running around first base going, go, baby, go, go. And then it went out, and I almost like fell over running around first base. I was so shocked that it actually went out. And to hit it off a guy like him, who's one of the best pitchers in the game for sure, uh, was, I mean, such, it was such an unforgettable moment. I'll never forget it. And uh, I want to do it again, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, we'll have to try to get another kind of just miracle moment. It felt like angels in the outfield out there, you know, <laughs> just like it was crazy. It felt like a dream. Another great movie, by the way, one of my favorites. Yes. Um, hey, yes. you've got some uh, athletic ability in your family. And uh, Christopher is talking here on Twitter about your dad being a safety for the Penn State football team. Did you ever consider playing football over baseball when you were younger? Uh, I did through middle school and then uh, came, uh, high school came around. And I really like baseball and basketball better, so I went with those two instead of football. And, uh, yeah, I just – one of those things I was better I felt I was better at basketball and baseball than I was football and uh, I still love watching football and all that but um, I baseball has always been my top like my favorite sport and the sport I've been best at so that was a no-brainer it was just like basketball or football after that and I chose basketball sounds good hey Noah is joining us here on the Edward Jones Shannon Cage and has a question for you um, how can I get more rotation on my curveball because in high school I've kind of been struggling with that pitch yeah, that's a great question. I've actually, it's kind of been hit or miss for me this year. Um, for me, the thing that's help, helped the most is kind of making sure I have the, the ridge between my ring finger and my middle finger as tense as possible. And that's really helped me kind of stay on top of the ball and get more spin efficiency with it. So I'd really encourage you to like just explore holding the ball with that ridge really tense between your ring finger and your middle finger. And that can uh, really help your spin. Brent, this is my favorite part about this show is that major leaguers and, you know, younger kids coming up playing the game can link up and the advice can be passed down. This is uh, the best part about the Edward Jones Shannon Cage. All right, we got a yeah, question awesome. on Twitter from Go Pack Go. Just how strong can this rotation be at full strength once Jimmy Nelson returns? Uh, yeah, I think it can be one of the best, uh, best in the game for sure. We got guys who go out there, uh, compete, and give us a chance to win every night. And... Um, you know, Jimmy was our guy last year who was our ace going seven, eight innings every time and uh, keeping us, giving us the chance to win. And we knew when J it was Jimmy's day, he was, we had a good chance to win. So when, when he gets back uh, and healthy, which I hope is sooner rather than later, it can be a really exciting rotation. One of the best teams in the division. It's nice to see so far this season. We got Mike joining us here on the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. Hey, Mike. Hey. Big Brewers fan, Brent. Uh, I know that you're really awesome. big into the green movement. And I was wondering how many yeah. of your teammates you've been able to convince uh, to maybe have a water bottle on the bench or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, it's only a couple right now. Uh, great question. I, I'm trying to, like, do it by example. I don't want to try to force it on people necessarily, but I definitely encourage it. Um, and there's, you know, there's a couple guys who are, especially with like coffee and stuff in the clubhouse, are reusing, using Yetis and all that that I've seen going on. And um, I tried to buy a bunch of Tupperware, like little containers for my teammates in AAA a couple years ago. And some of them used it for a couple weeks, but most of them gave it to their wives and girlfriends to use, and they actually used it a lot. So as long as it was saving something, it was okay. But uh, right now it's only a couple that, that I've uh, – converted if you will <laughs> hey speaking of green initiatives clara j87 says on twitter why did you choose to major in environmental science and public policy when you were in school 
Uh, that's a really good question. I, I saw some documentaries when I was in high school that uh, talking about the environment and what we uh, can do to help it and just really motivated me to study something in the renewable energy sector. So uh, going to Harvard, that was definitely the go-to major uh, that I wanted to do there, and it ended up being a blast. I, I enjoyed a lot of my, pretty much all of my classes, and, um, yeah, it's something I still want to pursue at some point in the future. Yeah, I said in school. I like your casual uh, reference of uh, Harvard. I appreciate you uh, just kind of dropping that in there as I'm like, uh, what did you like about school? And you're like, well, Harvard was really great, thank you. Um, by the way, Stephen, who uh, knew that you went to Harvard, says, what was it like attending the prestigious university? It was awesome. I, I tell people all the time it was like wonderful experience overall, but like the best part was my other classmates that were there, how – Unbelievable, they were talented in, in the classroom, talented outside the classroom. Just how awesome of people they were, you know, genuine human beings inside and out. And that was one of the, that was my favorite part for sure. Um, but it was a blast. I mean, great, great school, great city to go to college in in Boston, and just had an absolute blast there. Sure, absolutely. All right, Daniel's here in the Edward Jones chat, and Cajun has a question for you. What do you got? Hello, Mr. Suter. I am um, I am Daniel from South Jersey. So you're one of the few MLB players who actually came from an Ivy League university, this one being Harvard. Um, so how does it feel to be one of those players that came from a really smart university as a, as a sports player? Uh, it feels really cool. Uh, like you said, there's not too many in the game uh, right now that are Ivy Leaguers, but I always felt like the Ivy League had really good uh, talent. Um, it was just maybe not the depth of talent that the SEC or ACC schools had, but uh, that the t top talent was could compete with other schools for sure and uh, it was really just a blessing like I was just smart enough to kind of get in and just good enough at baseball to kind of help myself get in there but uh, I'm really not I'm I would call myself just about average intelligence you know I'm, I just was worked hard in school and all that but it, it really is an honor to be one of the few Ivy Leaguers in the game right now. Hey working hard that's great advice love to pass that down to the youth, especially everyone that's watching and joining us here to ask you questions. Hey, Brent, uh, we're going to let you go. Before we do that, is there any sort of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sneak preview you can give us about maybe a skit that's coming out soon? Oh, no, no skits coming up soon that I know about, but who knows? There might be one on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I, yeah, I don't have any to give you right now sorry <laughs> well uh we'll look forward to, to seeing that hey brent congratulations awesome. thank you so much for joining us really appreciate it awesome thanks for having me and thank you to all the fans who joined us today here on the edward jones chatting cage for your questions we have edward jones right, chatting cages coming up appreciate all season long so make sure you join us i'm alexa Dat. stay tuned until then we'll see ya